Traffic Review Advisory Board meeting to order. Good afternoon and welcome. The Traffic Review Board reviews items of interest regarding parking and traffic items. We are an advisory board and our favorable recommendations today will go before the Oshkosh Common Council. The Council can accept or reject any recommendation from this board. If you don't agree with our decision, you can discuss the item with any Council member. If the board does not recommend an item, a council member may sponsor a new ordinance regarding that item. All items require two readings before the Common Council. The first reading will take place on Tuesday, November 28th at 6 p.m. and you will be allowed to comment on the item at that time, though the council will take no action. On Tuesday, December 12th at 6 p.m., the item will be on a second reading at which time the council will take action you will again be allowed to speak at that meeting regarding that item. For this afternoon's meeting, I will read each agenda item, at which time, if you'd like to speak, please step up to the podium. Please give your name and address. I do ask that you keep your comments pertinent to the agenda item. The item will then come back to this board for discussion and action. Please call the roll. Sazinski? Here. Wanschneider? Here. Becker? Here. Christensen? Here. 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 First item on this afternoon's agenda is approval of prior minutes. Any comments, questions, additions, or deletions? <clears throat> Seeing none, call the roll on approval of minutes. Sazinski? Aye. Ron Schneider? Aye. Becker? Aye. Christensen? <clears throat> Aye. Haas? Aye. Krause? Aye. Which brings us to public comment. This board has adopted a public participation policy which provides 15 minutes for general public comment on a first come first serve basis. Citizens must provide their name and address and may speak on matters related to traffic items or issues within the authority of this board. Statements should be addressed to the board members and not to city staff or other persons. Items that are on the agenda should be addressed at the time the item is read and not during the period for public comment. Statements are limited to three minutes and citizens may only provide comment one time unless special permission is granted by the board. Is there anyone that wishes to avail themselves of a essentially non-agenda item for public comment? Seeing none, brings us to new business. Item one, a request for bike lanes on Wisconsin Street, both sides from the curb cuts on the north end of the bridge to Irving Avenue. Current condition, no bike lane. Okay, this is a, the continuation of the item we've been discussing. Um, originally, the proposal was for the bike lanes to start on the um, south side of the bridge, um, but then there was concern um, at the August meeting about the bicycles in traffic um, sharing lanes over the bridge. Um, so after that, I discussed this further with the Bike and Pedestrian Committee and the um, proposed um, compromise would be to start the bike lanes on the other side of the bridge or the south side of the bridge or excuse me I'll say the north side of the bridge um, so if you recall the when Wisconsin Street was reconstructed it was made 54 feet wide in preparation for the installation of eventual bike lanes um, which would be four feet um, through most of the area and then switching to, to five feet at uh, Church Avenue, I believe is where it's widened out. Um, so at the last meeting, the uh, committee had asked for um, some sketches of what that would look like. So I provided those, um, had our engineering department do some sketches on um, some CAD drawings. Um, unfortunately, I don't have them to put on the screen, but basically you can kind of get an idea of what it is. Um, you know, the, the bike lanes would be painted out to begin and end basically um, where the curb cuts are here um, on, on this north side of the bridge. Um, and then like I mentioned earlier, they would, uh, they would be four feet wide with 11 foot travel lanes. Um, and then you have some sketches of what it would look like throughout the, through the intersections. Um, but basically they would be uh, four foot bike lanes with the 11 foot lanes until we get down to church and then at that point they'd be the 11 foot lanes and, and the five foot bike lane since it's a little bit wider um, from there to Irving the, the nice thing about adding bike lanes in this area is it would it connects nicely to the um, 
bike lanes we already have on Algoma and High as well as Irving. So it, and it, then it would connect obviously to the to the river walk there going towards downtown and to the Wyawash Trail going going the other way. So um, I think from from that standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with it. Want to have any questions for Mr. Collins? Okay, I'll start. Um, has any thought been given to what happens right there in terms of signage, Jim, with the transition where they are, actually the lack of a transition? Yeah, gen generally what we do is there would be, um, generally we would put signs that bike lane ends um, out, you know, it would be basically north of here a little right. bit, so you'd have bike lane ends here, um, and then over here you would have the signage that bike lane begins um, to notify both the bicycles and traffic that uh, that bike lanes are beginning and ending. Okay. Can you flip us 180 degrees so we're actually looking north? Try. My first actually sneak us closer to Pearl if you can. Oh, okay. It's a little tough to tell in the, uh, which is why I asked if you had the ability to put those uh, CAD drawings up on the board. My first concern happens at Pearl Avenue because that's a right turn only mm -hmm. scenario. So is it my understanding the bike lane's going to be, it'll be the, the curb lane will be right turn only, there'll be a bike lane and then a traffic lane, a through lane? That's the way the drawing appears, but. That's how high it is. <clears throat> right. So on the drawing, yeah. So through, through Pearl, it would be a right where the eleven foot we would have right, so we'd have the right turn. It would be similar to high. You'd have you'd have the bike lane over here and then the right turn lane. So the existing width on all four of those is eleven or twelve? Um it looks like <clears throat> I think we got the four foot bike lane and we'll have an 11 foot travel lane and this one so this outside lane it looks like is a little bit wider um, if we needed to though we can always shift this over a little bit too you know we could always shift this line over a little bit um, if we needed to People but it looks like this one is a little bit wide. The turn lane is a straight Oh, true. Lane. Yeah, I, I'm just worried about eight pounds and a five pound sack for lack of mm -hmm. a better term. And then I've got the same concern, although it's a little, I would argue, a little more dangerous at Wisconsin and Church, where you've got the three-way stop, because you've got the same scenario at that corner. You've got a right turn only, a three-way stop, if you've in fact got someone in that uh, that right turn lane, yeah, we gotta go further. Um, if you've got someone in that right turn only lane and a bicycle next to them in low light conditions, it could prove to be a little dicey. I didn't know if there was a way we could potentially make that a little safer if we're gonna put a bike lane through there. At a signalized intersection, it's not as big a deal. Right. Oh. What you can do, what we do at some signalized intersections is just, we just merge the, the bike, the bikes and traffic have to merge. So we, in essence, end the bike lane and the, then. So at, is that the plan at church? At that then? point, they would have to merge. Um, it doesn't look. But this one. Well, it, again, these are. Yeah, these off. looks like we were. <clears throat> these, it looks like we were going to continue them through, through the intersection. That's a little concerning for my. But like you said, it's the same. That's what we have at High and Algoma now is where, you but know, you have the bike lane on the right. Church. Right. I'm talking about the one at okay, church. church. Yeah, where it's not. I don't know that we've actually got that yeah. specific scenario any other where in any other place in town with a bike lane at a uh, right turn only at a stop. Is that why the bike lanes are five feet? On Church Ave? Um, after Church is where the pavement widens out a little bit because okay. that's part of the older section that 
wasn't really fun when they redid was when they redid Wisconsin. Would it be changed to Charo in that area? And then flip back to a bike lane north of church? Mm -hmm. I, I think that's, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, that's certainly a, vi you know, a potential solution, but then we run the risk of causing a bit of confusion, too, because we're, we're laying in and then we're not laying in and then we're well, laying Well, but we got symbols to it. Uh, were true. To telegraph that to the drivers. And it's just a matter of getting used to reading the road. Yeah, I know that this one, I know that there's quite an interest in getting it, the bike lanes put in since it's since that's how the road was constructed to accommodate for them. I still don't understand why they weren't put in at the time, but for whatever reason, they weren't painted at the time they reconstructed the road. Zero, uh, situation well, reasonable at that point, Jim. I mean, I mean, you you could. It's a possibility. I mean, at least it de designates that it's for both, and it's not the only place in the city where you got Charles. It'd just be interrupted for a short time, as far as a lane. So where where are you saying this? Should, so it'd be bike lanes up to. Up to the stop at church, and then a Cheryl from church through the intersection, yeah. and then start the bike lane start again. The bike lane yeah, again. Right. Oh, yeah. The I mean, church. Give some direction and some order to. Because again, a a bicycle is trying to go up Wisconsin from Ohio, or excuse me, from Wisconsin up to Irving, and once you get north at, through that intersection at church, could be a little dicey, yeah. based on the curve and the three-way stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a Somebody possibility. Trying to make a left, south, southbound from Wisconsin, making a left on the church could be a problem. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> if all they see is the car turning right, they'll have every intention of following the car through after the car turns right, not realizing there's potentially a well, bicycle coming at them at the same car. time. Yeah, but they got, you got hand signals too. Well. Again, but in low light situations. Well, that's that's yeah. true. There we go. So you're worried about through here, right? Because again, the way it's laid out, at least best I can tell from these diagrams, the bike lane would be here. So if you've got a bike coming straight to head up Wisconsin, say towards North High School, and this guy's turning right like this guy is, and this guy's coming straight, they're both going to go at the same time, 99% of the time. Person coming southbound on Wisconsin will 99 out of 100 times follow the guy in the black SUV right mm -hmm. after he turns. But if the person on the bicycle is a little slow to the party, <laughs> you could have a problem. Yeah, it's conflict. Again, you've got to kind of expect a person on the bike to be slow to the party because if they're truly at a dead stop, it takes a little bit of time to get ahead of steam up. So I think a Cheryl is probably the best uh, best solution. Through the intersection, so we'd end the cool. bike lane down, you know, a little bit further, then put the Cheryl and then start it again after the intersection. That's right, north of, mm -hmm. yep. yeah, right there, by the... We'll start it up here. Walk. Somewhere up there. Mm -hmm. That would solve it. Uh, probably more. Yeah. Probably be the safest way to do it. Your idea, Ross? <laughs> yeah, it's just a thought. I'm, I'm looking for a uh, an amendment potentially. Okay, well then I'll <laughs> <laughs> I'll make an amendment that we should uh, <coughs> change from lane to Charles and back to the lane as you go through the uh, church intersection. Anyone curious? Second. Any further discussion on that? Follow the roll on the amended item. For the, the amendment. amendment. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I meant. I'm, I apologize. Not what I said, but that's what I meant. Yes, on the amendment. Aye. Schneider. 
Aye. Becker? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Haas? Aye. Krause? Aye. Carried. All right, back to the item as amended. Any further, any public comment, any questions from board members? I have one other. What's the parking restriction north of Church to Irving? Is it? I think there's no parking. Open. It's no parking. It's no, okay. That's why we I, thought, I meant open in that direction. Yeah, that's kind of why we. For no cars. We, th we thought this would make a lot of sense too because there's there's currently no parking there so right now it's just between church and irving it's just really it's wide lanes but there's no parking anyone else and any public comment before i uh, i call the roll i right, call the roll on the item as amended Aye. Schneider. Aye. Becker? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Oz? Aye. Rousey? Aye. Carried 6 0. All right, which brings us to the second and final agenda item under new business, and I'm only going to read this once. <laughs> <laughs> A request for no parking on 9th Avenue, both sides from Rykow Street to Knapp Street. Current condition no parking south side from Rykow Street to 240 feet west. Of Sawyer Street from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday, except New Year's Day, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas Day. No parking south side from Sawyer Street to 250 feet west of Knapp Street from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday, except New Year's Day, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas Day. No parking north side from Rykow Street to 250 feet west of Knapp Street from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday, except New Year's Day, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas Day. No parking both sides from 250 feet west of Knapp Street to 250 feet east of Knapp Street. No parking south side from Sawyer Street to 240 feet west. Need a second. Second. I do know there are a couple of members of the public that do wish to comment. I would invite those that want to comment to the podium at this well, point. Unless, oh, I'm sorry. Let's explain it okay. first sorry, what it Jim. is. Um, but anyway, the, uh, so basically this, as most of you recall on this board, we've <coughs> talked about this section on ninth for a number of years. Um, and one of the, we had discussed possibly converting it to four lanes um, that was about a year and a year and a half ago and then the board had liked the proposal better of doing a road reconfiguration with possibly doing a shared left turn lane and then one lane in each direction um so in, in order to consider those options you know the, the the latter being the one that the board's interested in the, the first step would be to remove parking um, as you can see um, on the the diagram you have there and basically the gist of, of of what dan just read is that there currently is only parking allowed there after 6 p.m and on basically on holidays so for the majority other than at you know a couple of the intersections so that's um that's kind of where we're at now so the you know up to knapp street there isn't really um generally a, a whole lot of parking that of cars there currently and um, the other requests I've gotten you know throughout my couple the last couple years is I know there's a lot of confusion of, of whether that is you know whether it's two lanes or four lanes and drivers currently drive it as four lanes even though it's technically a two-lane road and I do get inquiries once in a while from the police department as well so, you know after we did Sawyer Street um, some of them ask, well, can't you do that on 9th? And then the same thing, um, a couple of them call and ask, well, is that a two lane or is it a four lane? And I think it's it's taught differently depending on who you talk to. So um, that's the idea is that if we removed parking, then we could look at possibly doing that that road reconfiguration. But, but the first step is to get this out there and see what the feelings are in parking. Will we be able to give a recommendation as to the four or three lane approach or oh yeah definitely I, I think 
where the board was at last time we discussed this was that uh, it was favored the three lane. Yeah, I think the majority was. Uh, so a what? A couple what, of years ago. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is get the the thoughts on you know, and then we got I know we got some citizens to speak here as well on on the parking removal, um, and then depending on that, if that is acceptable, then I can come forward with some um, a proposal for potentially doing the, the three lane. Uh, which we've already started working on a little bit. I know our, I worked with our engineering department a little bit last year, and we kind of have some schematics similar to this we've started working on. Um, but like I said, the first step is to get the, we'd have to remove parking. Run in with a quick question for Jim before I turn it over to the citizens. Right. You have a comment to make? Uh, please step to the podium, state your name and address. <clears throat> Hi, my name is uh, Don Benson, address is 1504 West 9th Avenue. Um, I've been there about 11 years. Um, my big concerns is for the speed of the traffic, which there's been a lot of um, um, attempts at a force enforcement on that but it's very limited um, the other major concern is the four lanes of traffic that is used that way that's really not um, it's illegal for them to be driving four lanes but even law enforcement doesn't know that it seems like um, it's city uh, buses and um, salt trucks and law enforcement themselves that drive at four lanes um, the parking right now w is an opportunity for a vehicle to be out there to show people that, whoa, this isn't really even a driving lane. What am I doing here? Um, so that actually gives that opportunity for someone to then, oh, I better move over. Um, I do put my vehicle out there. Most of the time I do it is when I'm going to mow my lawn because if I don't, I literally take my life in my own hands. Um, the vehicles are literally a foot, a foot and a half away from me, and if they've got a big mirror, there's a good chance it's hitting me, um, which is sad. Um, snow removal, boy, <laughs> I can't tell you. I definitely don't do it during a busy time of day. I try to get out there at 5 in the morning when there's light traffic if I need to do it at the end of my driveway because they don't, they don't care at that point either. Um, so I guess if they're... Looking at removing the parking, they better do something with the four lanes of traffic um, because that's huge. Uh, if we just remove the parking and we don't do anything from here on for a year or two years or five years, there will be problems. Um, I've been there 11 years and I can count four times that I know of that I've had vehicles jump the curb and hit the light pole right in front of my house or end up in my yard um, because they are driving again, a foot away from the curb, and any little look the other way or deviation from what they're doing, and boom, they jump the curb, and there they go. Um, so it, it's dangerous, and it needs to be fixed. Um, moving, removing the parking, I don't see as fixing it unless it's part of a package deal. Um, if, if part of that package is removing the parking and changing the entire flow, that's fine. But just removing it and waiting a year, two years, or five years is not an answer. That's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, Nick Ninehouse, 1435 West 9th Ave. Um, I agree with everything he said. I, I don't think we should remove the parking and if in fact I think we should have more parking full-time and shut it down make it a two-lane road it is a two-lane road I agree I can't I cannot cut the grass I can't remove the snow uh, the kids the population of kids have grown and they're walking right next to that uh, it scares the daylights out of me I it it's not a it's not a street it's it's close to a highway or you're going to make it into an interstate. Um, it needs to be full-time parking. It needs to be lined off so that people realize that it's not a driving lane. I agree, the cops, the city bus, they're all driving in that lane. They're promoting it. 
you know, if anything, the school, the, the buses should be driving more towards the driving lane, shutting the, the speed of the traffic down. Um, I would like to see it full-time parking and uh, uh, not, not a three-lane. I don't know what a three-lane is going to be a real, much, uh, real advantage at all, personally. I, I, I've lived there 20 years, and it's, it's a nightmare. Uh, getting in and out of my driveway is interesting. I now drive on my grass. You can look on my grass. I got, I got tire marks. It's just easier to pull in there and stuff. If it was a parking lane, I'd be able to get in and out of my driveway a lot easier. So for safety of the kids, which I totally support, I, I see more and more kids in that neighborhood now than I've probably seen in the last five or six years. And we want to turn this into a more, you know, you want to move the traffic closer to the sidewalks by creating a third lane. Ah, to me, that's crazy. You're, you're going the wrong way. I, I think you should be closing off the side roads and or the side lanes like it's supposed to be intended you know last time i was here and i talked about this you guys were going to somebody was going to go out and fix uh they were going to paint all the lines and everything to make it more clear that it it wasn't a four-lane road they did nothing they have not done nothing since the last meeting that i remember they in fact i think if they did anything they took a sign down and said merged that it wasn't a traffic lane so i've had cars hit out there at least three times parked so it, everybody does think it's a four lane we should clearly identify that it's not a four lane and do what we have to do to slow that traffic down enforcement um <laughs> i haven't really seen many cops out there enforcing it <laughs> not saying that they, they don't because i have seen people get pulled over but if you want to slow the traffic down, I think you'd have to really, really enforce it like you would in some of the more busy streets. So, Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Hi, uh, my name's Pete Wolf. I live at 813 South Sawyer. I am uh, the northwest corner of the intersection of 9th and Sawyer. Uh, I, I, I share the concerns of the uh, uh, previous two people testifying. Um, uh, traffic going that fast, so close to the curb, I've been close to hit a number of times as I've mowed my lawn or been clearing snow at the intersection or at, at the corner there during the winter time. Um, whether, whether Ninth is a four-lane road or not, everybody treats it like it is a four-lane. Uh, the bus drivers do, the police officers do uh, all day long, and therefore speed is uh, a constant problem there. Uh, I, I would I would agree that making a making it a three lane road with a common lane in the middle would just drive those, those speeding people closer to the closer to the curb than half of them already are. Uh, I, I would urge perhaps maybe uh, bicycle lanes be put in next to the curb. Uh, in, in traveling on uh, Sawyer Street that seems to have driven a lot of the traffic closer to the center of the street where they belong. So again, uh, with the parking, as far as parking is concerned, my, my major concerns is just the people treating it like a four-lane road and how fast they are and how close to the curb they are and, and uh, being a hazard. Any board members with comments, questions, or concerns? Yeah, so that's a three-lane. It'd be like similar to Murdoch, where it would be striped off, to more the people closer to the center and not away and further away from the curb, wouldn't it? Right. Yeah, we could, we could work on that. Um, the original concept that we were we had talked about was uh, a th it'd be like a 13-foot travel lane in each direction, and then 16 feet for a shared uh, left turn lane. Um, it, do you envision it like Murdoch truly is with the solid white along the right edge? We could do that. Um, I think there's that not, addresses some of those concerns. There's not quite as much. Um, it's 42 feet wide, so the recommendation for the shared left turn lane is 14 feet for a minimum, and then you could do 10. You probably want 11 foot driving lane, so that would be 11, 11 6, 37. 14. So yeah, that'd be 36. So that if we did something like that, that would leave six feet. So you could potentially stripe three foot off three the feet edge. off each edge, yeah. you know, which it wouldn't. It, it would be similar. 
I think Murdoch is like four or five. It gets a little bit wider, but um, y- y- that's a possibility. Where does or even is it even on the capital improvements to redo ninth from? I it's not. Idea? I know it's not in the five year plan. Okay, an idea. Okay, because I think in a in a perfect world, and this has long been a concern of mine. Um, I avoid going down Ninth Avenue whenever possible, um, just because of this particular situation. But one of the things I've always envisioned there is rumble strips on the edge. So you get too close to the curb and you're, uh, you're chattering all the way down the road to get your attention. Now, that's why I asked about capital improvements because that's the only way that's going to happen because otherwise you'd have to tear the road up to do it. But I think this is a nice compromise to get that three-foot white stripe or that, that white stripe three feet off the edge potentially. <clears throat> Honestly, that's the only way I would... Uh, be comfortable moving forward with taking the parking off because I think they bring up a good point. It provides a, a screen, if you will, down that curb if you've got to do anything in your front yard. And again, as I, uh, I tell everybody, it takes four people abreast going down ninth and one of them to sneeze and all hell breaks loose going down ninth. There's even more hazardous <coughs> winter because the snow removal is sure, yeah. into the curb. Exactly. So that just narrows it down even further. I live in the condo between Knapp and uh, Ohio Street, and I I generally have tried to avoid Ninth. Like I'll take the long way around and take Osborne, you know, more often than not. Bill, I I like the idea that you brought up of of a bike lane. Now you said three feet. You could go three feet from each curb. Is Would, that is that a bike lane? Is that and no, that's a little skinny for a bike lane. Four. Bike lane's yeah. got to be a minimum of four. four. That's that's the problem with with it's not wide enough to do a shared left turn lane and do bike lanes. Um, you could, if you didn't do a shared left turn lane, you could do a bike lane on each side. That you'd have wider lanes. You know, you had forty two feet to work with. So, if you didn't do a shared left turn lane and you just did a bike lane, it would be you'd have two sixteen foot lanes. Um, so I was driving down the road over the summer at night and there was four cars and I had to pull over a little and I hit my mirror on somebody's recycling garbage can and broke my mirror. So, I mean, I think the, the bike lanes on each side would widen the, the drive lane going each way. It would give a little more room for everybody and it would actually encourage people to ride, ride bikes down that road, which I think people would like to. I, mean, I think people are probably scared to drive bikes with those cars down there. So wouldn't be designated as a bike lane. Though. Yeah, we don't. We don't. It's not wide. I mean, we could do the three foot painted out. You know, like on we've done on Murdoch, and I know mm-hmm. there's. Um, it's wider than that on Oakwood, but I know in the town of Algoma they have that. You know, striped out on the side of the road. It's we not could wide do enough that. To four feet on each side, and then one drive lane on each side. No, because it's mm-hmm. it's, it's forty two feet wide. So so see, so you got eleven feet in each direction, and then a fourteen foot shared left turn lane it's a really narrow four four cars going down right. it's it's that's crap. Oh, well it's before you were on this board but we talked about that as a potential you could do you could stripe it as four lanes but they'd be ten and a half foot lanes which are which is acceptable but it's it, it's tight i mean the minimum acceptable lane is 10 feet most are generally 11 to 12 but but again, those standards were set how long ago before uh, F-250s and 350s came into uh, the realm of possibility? I mean, yeah. the wider you know, cars are getting wider, trucks are getting wider. That's so. true. And the Ten, mirrors, too. Well, right, as a result. Uh, so, again, I'm not comfortable with much less than 11 for a lane. I mean, if we can get it. So anything less than that gets a little dicey. We do have some 10-foot turn lanes, and this, but that's different than a travel yeah, lane. People are generally slowing down to make right. a turn. So. Um, is, is there something, uh, <clears throat> you said 14 feet for a turn? Like, yep. Is there is that a sort of minimum or is that a requirement or? Yeah, that's the recommended minimum. Uh, could it be twelve? That'd be kind of that'd be pretty tight for a shared left turn lane. Well, if you had twelve, you could have eleven, eleven, twelve, and then two fours. Yeah. And and and. Eleven. Yeah. If you wanted to do, that's 
That would be pretty narrow though for a shared left turn lane. And then the, and it'd also be narrow for the bike lanes, so it's really not ideal for either. Um, the four the four feet as current is acceptable, but the new the standard for bike lanes now is five feet. Um, and the DOT and the Federal Highway Administration's recommendation for shared left turn lanes is 14 feet minimum. So I wouldn't, especially on ninth, I wouldn't be real comfortable making that narrower than what they recommend because that is a really busy street. A lot of traffic there. And like Dan said, snow that is much less room. It's really too narrow of a road for four lanes, but it's too wide for two. Exactly. Right. <coughs> Which is why I think the white stripe three feet off the, yeah. Yeah. the edge is like probably the. I'd like to amend that we go with a three lane and yeah. stripes on the side. Right. I think that solves a lot of the questions and uh, reasons, uh, characteristics of ninth at the present time could be avoided when it's in and out of driveways or mowing lawn or the mirrors or all of those factors if you go to the three you could remove a lot of that do we have a second for dan's amendment second any uh, any comment question on the amendment call the roll on the amendment if you would Marlene. aye Juan schneider aye becker aye christensen aye oz aye rousey aye all right, which brings us back to the motion as amended. Just to make sure everyone's on the same page, we're talking about removing parking and incorporating it, a package deal, as was said before, to paint a white stripe three feet off the edge of ninth in that stretch. In fact, three lanes. Correct. Three lanes. Yes. An eastbound lane, a westbound lane, and a shared left turn lane. Correct. Right. Anyone have any comments, questions, or concerns? Because that's what's before us. All right, that being said, call the roll on the, uh, the item as amended. Szynski? Aye. Weinschneider? Aye. Becker? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Oz? Aye. Rousey? Aye. Hopefully problem solved. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that area, I mean, I. From what I'm hearing, I think everybody agrees we need to do something. So, um, you know, obviously this won't take place until, you know, next street spring. painting yeah. season. So, yeah, it won't be till next spring. But um, what I'll do is I'll get the, I'll work with engineering on some, some drawings on the plans and bring those back so you can take a look at those. And um, so we'll do that. Thank you. Which brings us to staff statements. Yeah, I just had a, I have a couple um Follow-ups from the last meeting, um, the bike lanes on Washington, um, the Bike and Pedestrian Committee uh, voted on Cheryl's as well. So that'll we'll go forward with Cheryl's there and um, Public Works will go forward with constructing the street as um, has been recommended. Um, since Cheryl's are, there's no physical change, it's just a pavement marking, so we can do that next season as well. Um, then the other update is on the greenery parking. I talked to um, Chet Wiesenberg, the developer there, and we decided to leave the parking in back as unrestricted for now. Um, and then he's going to keep an eye on it. And if he feels that he needs to restrict it to four hours or something like that, then he'll bring that back at a, at a further time. But now, um, so he'll, he has the two-hour parking in front, and then he'll have the longer parking available in back. So that'll be... Um, a compromise for now and like I said I told him if he has any concerns let me know and we'll work on it um, then the other item is the and, and I need to talk to the city manager a little bit more about where he's on with council on this but the potential merger of the park and utility with the traffic review board um, that's one of uh, the possible recommendations that he had discussed with council so I believe he's going to be bringing um, that topic back to council but the park and utility we met 
last week and they did vote in favor of, of merging with traffic review. So now it's, um, you know, Mark will make his recommendation to council and then we will kind of move forward from there. Um, so far the park and utility is a, a five member board. I needed to talk to one of them yet. Um, a couple of them indicated they they weren't interested. One idea is if we, if we, um, merge park utility traffic is to increase this board size until some terms expired. But um, I think I only have one of these members that are potentially interested. Um, and as you know, we still have a seat on the board. So I'll reach out to the last person that wasn't at the meeting and, and discuss that. Um, and then I'll obviously I get, give the city manager an update so he can present council with what his recommendation is. And if council decides that's a good idea, then that's a possibility here and probably would be the coming year, probably January or February. Do they have a different council representative? Yes, they do. So, um, so you just eliminate one of those members as well. So, yep, I would assume it would just that would stay the same until the, the reappointments mm -hmm. after the next election. However, that yeah, works. We're usually on more than one. Mm -hmm. I think we're in a good position with this board because there's not, not too many people. Where some of the ones they're talking about combining, mm -hmm. there's 15 people, and we can't have 15 people on a board. So, we're kind of lucky here. I think we always have a decent size agenda. Yeah, I, and park and utility, honestly, really, you know, one of the members commented he's been on the board 20 years, and all they've really ever done is, you know, change time limits on parking stalls. So, <laughs> I mean, it's since since we don't have currently paid parking, it's, you know, I think that the mission of that utility is kind of run its course. So, um, so that that's coming up, and I think that. Uh, that would be a, a good merger because those agendas are pretty limited so they would fit in nicely i think with this and there's still some confusion with people too between who has a say on on street parking versus off street parking so that would kind of help clear that up as well so i think it would be a good fit but we'll see how that plays out but i think it's probably um, a good likelihood that might happen um, i think that's that it that's it for staff yeah which brings us to requests for future agenda items. <clears throat> Any? Well, I got just a, mainly a question. Uh, if you go to Sawyer and, and uh, Witzel, uh, north and south on, on Sawyer, if you're going south, you get, a, you get a left turn arrow. If you're going north, you do not. I was wondering how, how that came about and why, why you usually get a both directions get an arrow, northbound, southbound. But you only get it on the if you're going south off of Sawyer. To Sawyer. And there's quite a few cars that have to sit there and wait and can't clear. Usually it, um, I'll get back to it the next meeting, but usually it's due to the traffic signal timing. So they, it's generally because there's not enough time to have an arrow the other, to have a dedicated well, arrow the other way. Well, they both go, arrows would go on at the same time. Right. And so the both, all the left turners could <coughs> do their left turning. Now, as it is now, the north the bound ones, they have to wait for the arrow to, you know, mm -hmm. cancel. And then they gotta wait for the traffic to clear that's going south. Right. So they're really waiting quite a long time where the other, direction has the right of way to go make a left turn. I was just wondering sure. how come it wasn't originally Green Arrow and both at the same time. I think there's a few intersections like that, like yeah. 9th and North. Well, yeah, there's a left turn going on to... Right. But with Lourdes and east. the pizza place and all that, and uh, there's enough traffic that yeah, I it think should, it warrants yeah. a left turn arrow. Uh, it should well, be set up that anywhere there's a left turn that the opposite gets the two because otherwise think. like you said they're just kind you of in a void for yeah. that time period yeah that's why i brought it up i think it's just uh, generally i'll find out both, but I'm both directions usually at the same time yeah i'll find out i'm sure it has to do with the traffic signal timing i just don't know the details off the top of my head but i can get an answer for you okay <coughs> any other requests for future agenda items or issues Move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>